with higher core clock speeds, everyone is looking to break that 1.5 gigahertz mark. We found a card that can do it. It's high end, it has two 8 pin power connectors, it has three fans. Can you guess what it is? Hello everyone, I'm Paul and welcome to your Legion. 1.5 gigahertz is something that we strive to obtain but many of us cannot do it. Even though the video cards nowadays have higher clock speeds, boost clocks as long as you keep the temperatures nice and low, they'll go higher than they have before. But not too many manufacturers produce a card that we could get up there unless it's their higher ends. Of course, I've had some in the past that were lower ends that I've gotten to 1.5, but that's very few and far between. Even on the higher ends, I've had that problem to get it to 1.5. I've gotten close. I've gotten to 1470, 1480, but never really broke that 1.5 gigahertz mark. We do have a card that can do it. It's a 980 Ti by Gigabyte. It's a gaming G1. It has three fans on it. It has two 8-pin power connectors. It has a large heat sink. It does keep it very cool. So let's take a look at it. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab it from Irma here and we'll bring it up. And as you can see, three nice fans. It has a beautiful heat sink underneath it. It does have all copper, copper uh, pipes on it. So you're getting eight millimeter and six millimeter pipes. It does have a triangular center which actually dissipates the heat out to the fins so you get better cooling out of it. It does have an LED which you could change to different colors. Yes, they do have purple which is my favorite color which I really appreciate. It's got a beautiful back plate on it. It is vented so you're going to get some better heat dissipation there and also since it is a larger card, you're going to get better stability on the card itself so you can actually not get that fracture of the PCB when it starts getting hot. It is PCIe 3.0 and you can run SLI with it. On the front of it, we have two DVI ports, we have three display ports and one HDMI. Now here's something funny about this card. They have this thing called Flex Technology. Flex Technology allows you to in a sense, put your monitors in a certain spot so you know where they're at. Now, a lot of cards, because of that, you, when, you put a bit, when you put a monitor into it, what's going to happen is you're not going to know where the monitor is. You're going to have to go into your control panel. You're going to have to fix everything up. That's a good part about this because technically, as you put them in, that's where they're going to fall. But unfortunately, when you're using a single monitor because of this flex technology, you're going to have to use the closest one to the HDMI port. So when the card's up like this, what I normally like to do is I usually like to use this display port. But unfortunately, because of flex, you do have to, with one monitor, use this on the bottom. That's the only downfall that I could actually find with this actual video card. Other than that, here are the eight pin power connectors. And I just want to show you these nice eight millimeter heat pipes in the back. They're really nice. The card is a beautiful card. I think it's one of the better looking cards on the market. Yes, it is a little bit longer. I know some of you don't like the long card. So at 12 inches, you're going to have to make sure if you decide to purchase something like this, that you do have the case that is going to fit it. If you don't have a case that's going to fit it, you're going to be a little bit ticked off. You're going to either have to go buy another case or you're going to be doing an RMA or sending this back. So make sure you predetermine what you have in order to accommodate a card like this. Benchmarks were great. This card actually has a very good overclock on it, meaning from, from the factory. So it actually beat the Titan in most benchmarks because of the overclock. And when I say Titan, I'm not talking about the original one. I'm talking about the newly released Titan X. Because of the, because of the overclock on this, we got better benchmarks than the Titan X did. But remember, the Titan X does have 12 gigs of memory. 
So if you're going to be running triple monitors like I am, you're gonna want that little extra memory in there and that's where it's going to prove that it is better than running a 980 Ti for the high end. Let's go ahead and take a look at the benchmarks. Well, hopefully you looked at the specs real quick and glossed them over. You'll notice that this card has two modes. It has an OC mode at a boost clock of 1291 and it has a gaming mode of a boost clock of 1241. Where they don't really mention it, but it does have an eco mode which will drop the clock speed down to 1100. Now the funny thing about NVIDIA GPUs is what they're doing, what they're doing with their boost clocks when they, when they rate their uh, clock speed what they're talking about is the actual minimum clock speed that you're going to get with the boost. So that is what they say you will get with the boost at its worst. So most of the time you'll notice a big difference between AMD and Nvidia where the boost clocks are actually a lot higher. So normally when, when somebody advertises a boost clock of 1291 you might be getting 1340. So I really don't know what to tell you about boost and base clocks anymore because it really does, it's not a factor at all. Well, I do want to say that I am really impressed with this card. Uh, it's one of, the, one of the first ones that I've reviewed in a while that I actually was excited about when I put it on and I started using it and I started seeing the way that it was performing. For those of you who have 1080p monitors, I'm gonna tell you right now, let's be straight about it. This is not gonna be the card for you. You want a 4K monitor when you're playing with this because you really want to get the value out of the card. Why are you gonna spend almost $700 and play it on a 1080p monitor? Now I know some of you probably want to and really are looking at purchasing this for a 1080p monitor thinking that maybe you're going to buy a 4k monitor in the future well if you're going to buy a 4k monitor in the future and the future is pretty soon then i would say go ahead but if you're going to stick with a 1080p monitor i wouldn't suggest purchasing this card i mean i know gigabyte's not going to like what i'm saying but i'm trying to help you guys save a little bit of your money because this is total overkill for a 1080p monitor unless you're running three of them then you, there's the different story. But if you're running a single monitor at 1080p, I don't suggest you get the card. But if you really want a lot of performance, then get the card. Use it on a 4K, use it on a multiple monitor setup. You're not going to have a problem playing any of your games. Just so everybody knows, I want to say I'm sorry sometimes for my cinematography here. It might not be the best all the time, but I want you to think about it. Would you rather me spend more time on cinematography or more time actually testing a card so I could give you, give you everything based on my knowledge of the card? Because if I could run two or three benchmarks and then spend all day doing zoom overs and this and that and basically give you no information because I don't know about the card because all I did was worry about my cinematography, that's fine. 
I know some of you love cin cinematography. And a lot of you have told me, well, maybe, Paul, if you go ahead and do this cinematography thing, you'll get more subscribers. But I always feel like it, I always felt that if I give you the basic knowledge about the card, I test the card, that's what is going to help you purchase the card. It's not going to help you purchase the card just because I do a whole ton of flyovers. I want to say thank you, everybody. We're going to go ahead and give this an Editor's Choice Award. It overclocked very well. It was a very good gaming experience. Use it with a G-Sync monitor. You're going to get an even better experience because it's going to flatten everything out. You're not going to get the tearing, etc. So, thank you. Stay thirsty, my friends. I will see you the next time. Bye-bye.